Hey guys, my name is Aaron Fleming. Welcome to another Film Photography Friday. I'm in Germany at the moment, have been here for a few days. Uh, my friend Keith, who's on the other side of this camera, flew over with me. His Instagram is going to be linked here, so go check him out. He's a great filmmaker and great fashion videographer. But today's video is going to be about this, the Nikon L3582. This camera is very similar to the famous Nikon L35 AF and it's virtually identical to Nikon L35 AF2 apart from the fact that it has a data back on the back. I also own two Nikon L35 AF2s and up until the day before we flew to Germany I owned a Nikon L35 AF. Even though they all share the same similar kind of a uh, feel to them and they all share a 35 millimeter f 2.8 lens i do prefer the feel of the original af over the second generation it just it felt nicer it felt more premium um, and i also heard that the original one has five elements in its lens whereas this only has four but i don't really think that makes too much of a difference because as you'll see from the results they're pretty sharp and they are much sharper than what i got from my canon af 35m this camera pretty much competed with the canon af 35m and that camera was one of my first point and shoot film cameras and I really loved using it but the one problem with it, it was a good bit bulkier than this so I think this is going to take over and be the camera that I kind of take everywhere with me. Um, it's nice plastic and I don't worry about it too much and it's the kind of camera that I'll bring with me when I don't want to put this gorgeous Contax T2 at risk. So when we went to the beach today this was the camera I brought with me. You're gonna see the results of this now, um, shot with Kodak Color Plus 200. I really enjoyed shooting this camera. The one problem that I did have with it was either by fault of my own or some one of my friends was playing around with it as we were in a pub. Um, but I think one of them might have opened the film door at the back and which completely reset the counter. So I thought that all of the film had rewound and that I was gonna be doing double exposure. So I was kind of like racing my way through the film, um, trying, to, trying to use up the shots before I went into the developer um, to get it developed. Uh, on the day before I flew to Germany. The other problem with this camera is unlike the Contax T2 this does not show you the shutter speed you're using and unlike the original L35 this does not let you choose the ISO you're going to be using so this does not let you overexpose it at all which is kind of quite disappointing one of the reasons I prefer the AF over the AF2 and the AD2. Another thing with this is you don't know when the flash is going to pop up so you can't even control it yourself. The only way to kind of trick the camera is to put your finger over the exposure, exposure meter and half press the shutter button and then you can get the flash to come up. Um, but other than that, you know, there's no real button but it doesn't matter too much. When you look through the viewfinder you see the same as you do in the Canon AF35 where you see like a scale from mountain to multiple people to one person and a little kind of like plastic line goes between them when you go to focus with like okay not working <laughs> but other than that i find that the focus is pretty on tact and it does a really good job so the next few shots you're going to see were shot in ireland with this the nikon l35 ad2 and kodak color plus 200. enjoy So the results you just saw were shot with this Kodak Color Plus 200. As I've said many times before, this is one of my favorite films to use, especially for testing out cameras, because it's cheap and I also know what to expect with it. It has some gorgeous colors and it reacts very well to sunlight. The only problem with it is it is a 200 ISO film, so it's not great for darkness or nighttime or anything like that. But 
it, I do find that during the summer especially, this does work very well and I, if you're starting out in film photography, I definitely check out this because you can get it for under like three euro roll. But my observations from using the Nikon L35 AD2 is that it seems to underexpose slightly and this goes back to the one disappointment I have with this camera where you can't manually set the aperture which is disappointing because for the Color Plus 200 I'd almost like to be able to set it not at box speed but be able to set it at 150 ISO or 100 ISO and just overexpose it by a stop or half a stop but yeah I would like to get the chance to overexpose it but sadly there's nothing to do that on this I think the only thing you could possibly do is you could set the flash and then it would force the camera to use 1 over 30 uh, shutter speed but then you have the flash as well which kind of can ruin a lot of things. The shots overall were pretty sharp, pretty sharp from this and you know for a camera that's very plasticky they were quite surprising and I would definitely recommend picking up a, some kind of Nikon L35 whether it's an AF, an AF2 an AD2 and I was just telling Keith today that there's an L35 I think it's called an AW which is basically an all-weather version of this that's waterproof and I'm thinking of getting that because we went paddleboarding today and I would have loved to bring this out into the water paddleboarding but sadly this isn't waterproof so I think that's gonna be one of my next purchases but all in all I'm pretty impressed and I don't think I'm gonna let this go quite so easily um, as I said before, I'm not the biggest fan of Databacks, but because of the rarity of the Databack on this, I think I'm just gonna have it and turn off the Databack um, and use it as such. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please make sure to give it a like, share, and subscribe. And I will talk to you as always in the next Film Photography Friday, which is gonna be out same time of 6 p.m. next week. Thank you, bye-bye.